Hello, welcome to our channel Elimika Mtandaoni. Uh, today we are proceeding with uh, another video on uh, business analytics and in today's video we will talk about descriptive analytics. Uh, if you remember we talked about business analytics in the previous videos. Uh, actually business analytics helps organizations make better decisions and improve performance by identifying patterns and trends in the vast amounts of data and descriptive analytics actually is the most basic and widely used uh, type of analytics it is used to produce the key performance indicators and metrics that are included in business reports and dashboards the descriptive analytics focuses mainly on summarizing and highlighting patterns in current and historical data which helps companies understand what has happened to date however uh, this kind of analytics does not attempt to analyze why something happened or predict what might happen in the future so to explore these questions companies need to combine both uh, descriptive analytics with other analysis methods so what is descriptive analytics. Descriptive analytics actually is the most common and fundamental form of analytics that companies use. Every part of the business can use descriptive analytics to keep tabs on operational performance and monitor trends. Examples of descriptive analytics include KPI, that means key performance indicators, for example, year-on-year -year percentage sales growth or revenue per customer or average time customers take to pay bills the products of descriptive analytics appear in different financial statements and other reports also appear in dashboards and some presentations so what is there uh, to take away it is this that descriptive analytics is the most basic and common type of analytics that companies use what it does it summarizes so you if you have uh, lots of data in your database then uh, descriptive analytics what it does it summarizes and highlights patterns in the current and the historical data so uh, with descriptive analytics you will find stuff like averages uh, and stuff like uh, a, the, the frequency of occurring of certain data uh, actual descriptive analytics gives a kind of summary uh, and highlights uh, the patterns in the uh, present data and the past data something else to take with you is descriptive analytics is used to produce reports descriptive analytics also is used the uh, in the key performance indicators and business metrics that enable companies to track performance and other trends. Uh, descriptive analytics helps companies understand what has happened to date. So combining descriptive analytics with other kinds of analytics such as diagnostic, predictive and prescriptive analytics helps companies explain why something has happened and predict the potential future outcomes and possible actions now let us see uh, how does descriptive analytics work in order to analyze data companies first need to collect and aggregate raw data from various sources then convert them into a common format for analysis so suppose a company may have data from different systems let's say system a system b system c system d etc then these systems must first be uh, the data from these systems let's say data a data b data c data e all should be collected then converted in a common format so this may be in another format this may be in another format this may be in another format so data is converted in a common format then uh, it is aggregated uh, before it is uh, analyzed so when we say a common format i'll give you uh, an example suppose 
in a company uh, in in one system uh, when they collect data about gender for example they collect data as uh, m o f that means m for female for male and f for female some other system may collect data uh, m to present one and f to present zero another system may represent data in form of uh, female as a word and male so if you want to perform analysis of this data from different um, data sources then we have to convert all this data into a common format so we may decide uh, of all the data when we talk about gender we will be talking about one or zero so if that is the case it means that when we go to analysis then analysis will be done uh, using a common format of the data after that then these data are ready for analysis so many companies uh, use data intelligence or a group of methods and tools uh, are used to collect and analyze data then form conclusions and action plans based on the findings other um, use uh, formulas like spreadsheet formulas to apply basic descriptive analytics uh, to the aggregated data then generating key performance indicators and other statistics that are then included in the reports uh, we may have integrated enterprise resource planning suites that make descriptive analytics much easier because they can store all of the organization's data in a single database the leading uh, suites also include a built-in analysis tool to help with data storytelling which in fact is the act of developing a narrative about information using visualizations to share the meaning behind the data in a compelling way these erp embedded business intelligence features can serve up uh, common key performance indicators with real-time data incorporated into dashboards charts and reports so in this case when you talk about enterprise resource planning as we have said we have let's say system one we have another system system two we have another system system three then all the data from these systems are brought into an integrated uh, database so they all of the data will be obtained in a single uh, database then in here there is where um, analysis will be done where reports will be produced and presented in dashboards in charts and reports now let us uh, discuss uh, how is descriptive analytics used before we go to the importance of descriptive analytics let's first discuss about how let us discuss about how or uh, descriptive analytics used companies use descriptive analytics across many parts of the business to evaluate how well they are operating and whether they are on track to attain business goals a company may have a goal then it conducts several operations with the aim at reaching at a certain goal so if there is a goal to reach then how will the company know if they are on the right track to attain that business then it is where it, it is this time where they can use uh, descriptive analytics to evaluate how they are operating and these business leaders and financial specialists track common financial metrics when uh, examples of, of, of common uh, financial metrics may be uh, such as uh, gross profit margin for example return on sales net profit margin operating cash flow uh, current ratio working capital and so many other uh, financial uh, metrics and key performance indicators that are produced by descriptive analytics for example think of this a company may have uh, a quarterly growth in revenues and expenses as its financial metrics then uh, teams such as marketing can use descriptive analytics to track uh, campaign performance by monitoring metrics like conversion rates and the number of social media followers uh, other companies such as manufacturing groups they can monitor 
metrics such as production line and throughput uh, and downtime. So the metrics produced, metrics produced by uh, descriptive analytics are used in several ways. For example, uh, in reports, the metrics can be used in reports. So the key financial metrics that are included in companies' financial statements are generated by descriptive analytics. Other common uh, reports also use descriptive analytics to highlight aspects of business performance. Another way is through visualization. It is through visualization. Displaying metrics in charts and other graphic representations uh, can more effectively communicate the impact to a wider audience. So visualization is also an important way where uh, uh, descriptive analytics can produce such metrics. Another is dashboards, can use dashboards. Uh, executives, managers and other employees may use dashboards to track progress and manage their daily workload. Dashboards present a selection of key performance indicators and other important information tailored to the needs of each person. So the information may be presented as charts or other visualizations to enable people to absorb it more quickly. Now that we have seen how descriptive analytics is used, then let us see how important it is. Why is descriptive analytics so important to businesses? Actually, descriptive analytics helps everyone in the company make more informed decisions that guide the business in the right direction. It reveals patterns that might otherwise be hidden in raw data. So enabling managers to see at a glance how well the business is performing and where improvements may be needed. Descriptive analytics also helps businesses communicate information among departments to the people outside the company. For example, Potential lenders and investors may want to scrutinize revenue, profit, cash flow, and debt metrics before they will put money into business. Now, what does descriptive analytics tell us? Descriptive analytics provide vital information about a company's performance. So, to know about company's performance, then we can perform descriptive analytics. Companies use descriptive analytics to track their progress over time and then compare performance with other businesses. So it provides insights into the following. For example, the current business performance, current business performance, Companies can monitor important metrics for individuals, groups, and the business overall. Think of this. Descriptive analytics can track sales per account representative. Sales of each product line or the company's overall sales revenue for a certain period. That is the current business performance. Another insight is through historical trends. Companies can track their progress by comparing metrics of different periods. For example, companies can analyze sales growth by calculating quarter revenue growth as percentage and presenting the historical trends in charts. Again, business descriptive analytics provide insights through strengths and weaknesses. Companies can use descriptive analytics to compare the performance of different business groups based on metrics such as revenue per employee and expenses as percentage of revenue. They can also compare their performance with industry averages or published data from other uh, companies. Now, after we have understood what uh, these descriptive analytics tell us and the importance of descriptive analytics, then what are the steps in descriptive analytics? 
let us say. Applying descriptive analytics generally starts with defining the metrics you want to produce and culminates with presenting them in the desired format. So these are the steps that you have to follow when you want to generate your own descriptive analytics. The first and very most important is to identify the metrics that you want to generate. These metrics should reflect key business goals to each group or of the company overall. Take this example. A growth-oriented company might focus on measuring quarterly increase in revenue, while the company's accounts receivable group might want to track days, sales outstanding, and other metrics that reflect how long it takes to collect money from customers. Another step after you have stated your business metrics is identification of data that is required. So locate the data you need to produce the desired metrics. At some companies, the data may be scattered across multiple applications and files. As we have said in the previous slides, you may have different systems. You may have different systems and files that can be scattered along the company. So companies use systems that we call ERP systems. These systems may already have most of or all of the data they need in their systems database or they can collect from other systems. So some metrics may also require data from external sources like other systems such as industry benchmarking database or electronic commerce websites and social media platforms. So you identify what data are required before you proceed with the descriptive analytics. Then after you have identified your data, the following process is to extract and prepare such data. If the data comes from multiple sources, as we have said, extracting, combining, and preparing the data for analysis is very time consuming, but it is a very important step to ensure accuracy. This step may involve data cleansing to eliminate the inconsistencies and errors in data from different sources, as well as transforming data into a format which is suitable for analysis tools. Advanced forms of data analytics employ a certain uh, process called the data modeling that help to prepare, to structure, and even to organize company information. Actual data modeling. Okay. The fourth step is to analyze data. Companies can use a variety of tools to apply descriptive analytics from spreadsheets to business intelligence software. So descriptive analytics often involves applying basic mathematics operations to one or more variables. For example, uh, sales managers may want to track the average revenue per sales or monthly revenue from new customers. Executives and financial specialists may seek to monitor financial metrics, for example, gross profit margin, which is the ratio of gross profit to sales. Then the last step in descriptive analytics is uh, to present data. Presenting data in comparing visual forms, such as pie charts, bar charts, and line graphs, often makes it easier to stakeholders to understand. However, some people, include financial specialists, may prefer to see information presented as numbers and tables. Now, we have discussed the steps, important steps in descriptive analytics. These are the examples of business uh, descriptive analytics, such as business reports, financial metrics, social media engagements, etc. When we talk about business reports, for example, uh, reports of revenue and expenses, reports about cash flow, accounts receivable, and accounts payable, 
or inventory and production. Those are examples of descriptive analytics. Another is financial metric and other business key performance indicators are examples of descriptive analytics. These include the metrics that assess the health and value of a business. For example, the price to earnings ratio, current ratio and return on invested capital. Other examples include social media engagement. Descriptive analytics generates metrics that help determine the return on social media initiatives such as growth of followers, engagement rates and revenue attributable to specific social media platforms. Surveys can be another example of descriptive analytics. Descriptive analytics produces summaries of internal and external survey results such as net promoter score. Descriptive analytics, by the way, offers many advantages. It does not require a deep understanding of analytical or statistical methods, or rather, it can be performed with readily available tools. It can answer many of the common questions about business performance, such as whether the last quarter's sales were in line with goals. This helps the business identify areas in need of improvement. However, everything that has advantages can have drawbacks. So the primary drawback of descriptive analytics is simply that uh, reports it simply reports what has happened without exploring the causes or attempting to predict what will happen next. It is also generally limited to relatively simple analysis that examine the relationships between two or three uh, variables. Companies can combine descriptive analytics with other analytics methods to gain a fuller picture of business performance. While descriptive analytics focuses on summarizing and interpreting historical data, these other methods dwell into, uh, into the causes of trends and examine potential future outcomes and actions. They may use machine learning in addition to human directed analysis to automatically identify patterns and relationships in data. In the coming video, we will talk about predictive analytics, pres prescriptive analytics, and a little bit about diagnostic analytics. In short, speaking of predictive analytics, this actually leverages the historical data to predict what could happen in the future. But in prescriptive analytics, uses the results of descriptive diagnostic and predictive analytics to suggest actions that businesses can take to influence future outcomes. The diagnostic analytics actually looks at why things happened. So all these types of analytics are very important. However, descriptive analytics is an essential technique that helps businesses make sense of vast amount of historical data. It helps you monitor performance and trends by tracking key performance indicators and other metrics. So by combining descriptive analytics with diagnostic, predictive and prescriptive analysis, companies can gain deeper insights into causes and likely future outcomes of events, as well as the potential actions that they can take to improve, to improve this business performance. Thank you for following Ermika Mtadaoni. This is Agustino.